What's going on? I've got a new gimbal. Let's have a party. What's going on? Right, so I got a new gimbal. The gimbal that I got is the new Xeon Crane. I don't know if it's Xeon, Zine, Zion. It could be any of them, some Chinese number. First initial thoughts, it's sick. It really, really is good. I've had this for about two weeks now, but I didn't want to put out a video without doing some proper tests on it and using it in a real world situation. Two days ago, I went out on a shoot. This is the first time I've used it in a professional environment. And honestly, it held up so well. It was so quick, easy to use and ease of use and quick setup is probably one of my main reasons for buying a product nowadays when I'm on a shoot. Right, first off, it comes in its own little case and a lot of other companies will just make you pay extra for a case so straight off the bat that's cool right so let's get stuck in so here it is look this is the case this is the gimbal I'll bring that a little bit closer to you so you can have a little cheeky look in the box you've got this bottom part pistol grip you get two sets of batteries you get the charger obviously the cable and finally the actual gimbal itself. So here it is. As you can see here, I've actually added my own quick release plate. The base plate isn't essential. I just thought, you know what, let's get one on there. So when I'm working and I'm on a shoot, I can literally take it off of the gimbal, onto the glide cam, onto the tripod. So the gimbal holds about 1.2 kilos. So in my case, I'm shooting with an A7S Mark II. Let's get this bad boy on it. And there you have it. The gimbal is set up and ready. Nah. So the next part about using the gimbal is balancing it. Just like you would a steady cam, it needs to be pre-balanced before you can start using it. What you have to do is basically adjust all of these different axes so that the camera is pretty much sitting like that without any issues at all before you even turn on the motors. So to do that, for example, when I've got the camera on here, you can see it's extremely front heavy and it's a little bit too camera left heavy, so you're right. So what we'll do then, let's do the row axes first. So because the camera's too left camera heavy, we need to then push this axis over to the right. We'll adjust this row axis here. And as you can see here, all I'm gonna do is push it further outwards. I'm gonna push it out a little bit further. Yeah, that's about right. So now, as you can see, the gimbal is too front heavy. So what we then need to do is bring the camera back. And to do that, you wanna move the base plate on the bottom further back on the gimbal base. Now, I recommend not tightening them too much because as you can see here, I've pushed mine way too far back and now it's too back heavy. So now I need to push it back forwards again. And to make this balancing process easier, there's actually a quarter thread in the bottom of the gimbal. So you can literally thread that onto say like a tripod, stick it on there, and then you've only got to touch the three axis instead of trying to hold it and like having issues like I'm having now. And this very bottom axis here is to move the actual plate and camera forwards and back. Now that won't actually make a difference on how well the camera's stabilized by the motors. It just helps the operator. If it's too front heavy, you're gonna feel like you're going like this the whole time. And if it's too back heavy, you're gonna be feeling like you're going like this the whole time. Right, so there we go, I'm pretty happy with that. The reason that you wanna get it as balanced as possible before you turn it on and get the motors working is because if it's almost in its prime position, which is horizontally straight and vertically straight, the motors don't have to do as much work. 
So say for example it's all bent up like this, the motors are going to have to like push to straighten that back and basically fight against gravity. So if it's in its position already, the motors just have to keep it there instead of fighting it away from its gravitational position basically. So that's why I would always recommend to balance it as well as you well as well as you possibly can before you turn it on and start the motors up. Right, let's turn it on. So there we go, the gimbal is now on and active. So as you can see, every axis is pretty much completely straight. The gimbal itself has three different modes and on here, there's a little joystick which you can actually use, as you can see here, to tilt upwards, tilt downwards. So in the very first mode, you basically pan it yourself, so it's got like a follow system. It will pan as and when you pan the actual pistol grip. And then you can adjust the tilt with the joystick. And to change the modes, you literally push in the joystick. There we go, we're now on another mode. So this mode is, well, I've done it in that direction now. So no matter what, every, every kind of direction I try to pan it in, it's gonna stay locked in that position. Look, I can hand still there, turn all the way around, and it's gonna be stayed locked in that particular direction. In this case, you can still pan, tilt, and everything on the joystick. You simply can't move it. The only reason I can see you wanting to use this is if you're walking directly parallel with something. So if there's, say for example, there's a runner here and you want a track facing this way, running alongside him, her, then that is a reason why you would want to keep it like that. But only if you're going to stay completely parallel because if they go off their parallel line, you're going to have issues. So yeah, I originally said there was three modes, but there's actually just them two that I spoke about. Another function that this gimbal has got is it's got a low mode. You have to do it really, really quick, otherwise the gimbal like goes mental. Oh. So look, that is now inverted mode. So it's exactly the same, it's just upside down. And this is probably one of the main reasons I wanted to get this. A lot of my shots are done very, very low down. I'm gonna to cut to a shot now that I done on Sunday, which you can see how nice, easy, and nimble it is for me to get in a very, very low position with this. And all I had to do was flip it round, and there I am, I'm in the low mode. But I was there shooting for three hours, on and off, and I'd say it must have been on for about an hour and a half. The batteries didn't run out. I had an extra set with me, didn't even have to use them. So for me personally, this is a bit of kit that is gonna make my job and my life so much easier in certain situations. Obviously, I wouldn't wanna shoot everything on a gimbal, because a lot of the times I like to go handheld, like to get a lot of movement in there, make it seem like it's absolute chaos, lots of fast moving action. But other times, you do just wanna stay on a gimbal for jobs that require you to keep the camera as steady as possible. One thing that I do love about a gimbal is keeping the horizon straight. I hate it when I go Dutch angle and it just does my head in. And with a gimbal, that ain't gonna happen. So that's cool. There's also an app on your phone. Let me get it out for you. Right, so here we go, look. Here is the app. Can you see that? Sorry about the cracked phone, but here's the app. So on here, you can calibrate the gimbal. So if, you've, if your axes are off, you can actually correct it. And on here, left. Oh look, see roll and the roll axes. So you could pretty much get all of your functions on the app if you wanted to. So after using this for about two weeks and actually using it on a professional situation, I must say it is wicked. I absolutely love it. Well, I'll tell you what, I actually put it through a lot the other day. So I really, really tested it and put it to its limits. And a lot of the stuff that I shot, I shot on 50 mil, because I really like tight shots, especially some tight moving shots. So everything I'm gonna show you now is in 50 millimeters. So I had a 50 mil lens on, and it just looked lovely. We'll do a hoverboard times zine crane shot. Bloody hell, it's a bit tight. Right, the zine crane on, what are these called, a hoverboard? Now. One charge of the log? Yeah. Right, yeah. Keep going. Oh, a bit faster, Josh. I'm catching up. I'm catching up, Josh. Quick. Whoa! 
fucking hell is this guy quick? Ah, shit! Whoa! One thing I must say is that I did see a, quite a bit of vibration. I'm gonna show you a shot now where I was literally sprinting. Like when I say sprint, I was sprinting as fast as I possibly could. And I could not believe how well the stabilization held up. Now, as you can see right about here, there is a little bit of vibration, a little bit of jitter. So. It is a case of just perfecting the way that you run or hold the gimbal. And I have noticed that in the upright position and when you run, it is a lot, lot harder to keep a smooth shot than having it in the low mode. Because the way that I hold it is, I hold it like this. So, is that in shot? I hold it like this. So when I'm running, it's a lot easier for me to keep it very, very steady. Because when you're running like this, like if you're absolutely going for it, it's a lot harder to hold it like this than it is in low mode. So that's it from me and this nice little review. Hope that helped you out, hope you enjoyed it. Zine Crane is wicked. And I'm gonna be taking it with me skiing in two weeks. I'm gonna be shooting with this and also with the drone. The drone is coming up the mountain. I've sorted out my pack for it. I just need to check the regulations in Andorra for shooting with a drone there. Make sure to check out the next video because I'm going to review this compared to the glide cam. And I'm going to talk about the different situations that I would use a glide cam over the gimbal, what benefits they have, etc. And then we're off skiing, so don't miss them videos. They're going to be sick later on.